Johnny Dollar. This is Bill Walker down here in New York. You know Northeast Indemnity Associates? Sure, I know. How are you, Bill? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, Johnny. Yeah? You uh, ever seen the Grand Canyon? No, but I've always wanted to. Well, why don't you? At this time of year? Isn't that usually on the summer run? Oh, ask anybody. Grand Canyon's beautiful this time of year. And as long as the company's ready, willing, and able to pay your expenses, uh, how about it, Johnny? Okay, you've made the pitch. What's the trouble out there, Bill? Does the name Orloff mean anything to you? Sure, Ted Orloff, L.A. Office of Western Indemnity. I wish it were, Ted. What? Oh, Johnny, I'm talking about Christy Orloff. No, never heard of him. Uh, perhaps it's just as well. What do you mean by that, Billy? Well, it just happens that uh, Christy Orloff... Uh, oh, why don't you come on down here and let me give you the whole story. <laughs> okay, Billy, why not? <laughs> CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Northeast Indemnity Associates New York office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Grand Canyon matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, $10.12 for a mid-afternoon flight to New York. Item two, Three and a half for a cab in to Billy Walker's office in the Salmon Tower building at that well-known corner of 5th Avenue and 42nd Street. And Bill didn't waste any time getting to the point. I've arranged a room for you at the Waldorf, Johnny. Oh? And a seat on the plane to Phoenix a few minutes after 8 tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Meantime, cocktails and dinner and the show tonight will be on me. <laughs> uh, of course, unless you have other plans. Oh, no, no plans at all, but... Uh... Why the royal treatment, Bill? Oh, it's the least we can do, considering what's at stake on this one. Which is what? I mentioned Christy Orloff. Yeah, and I told you I'd never heard of him. A lot of people haven't. But do you remember the summit meeting back in November 57? Summit meeting? Yep. Let's see. Uh, that was before Khrushchev grabbed his top spot, wasn't it? Well, Nicky had nothing to do with this one. I'm talking about a meeting that took place in the little town of Appalachian, New York. Oh, yes. That gathering of 60 or 65 alleged top men of the underworld. Mm -hmm. And among those present was our little old friend, Christy Orloff. Not one of the big shots, I'm sure. Maybe there is a bodyguard or something, but he was there. So when you find him, Johnny, just remember that. Uh, why should I find him, Bill? Because I am convinced that he has the Oteras necklace. Wait a minute. Are you talking about that ruby and emerald thing that some countess brought over here? Got written up in all the picture magazines a couple of years ago? That's right. Was sold to Winkler and Winkler, the big jewelry outfit? And has since been quietly, cleverly stolen. No kidding. Yep. It's been kept out of the papers. But, Johnny, we wrote the insurance on it. For how much? Just under a million. Wow. If I remember the pictures of it, that thing could have been broken up by a fence with no trouble at all. Right. Now, the police are doing everything they can. And as you know, I have a lot of faith in our New York police. So have I. Who's your contact? The man at the 18th Precinct. Randy Singer? Yep, Lieutenant Randolph A. Singer. One of the best, Bill. If he can't run it down for you. Well, he's the one who's so sure that Christy Orloff has the necklace. Has he arrested him? They held him on suspicion for a while, but apparently didn't mean a thing. Hmm. I wonder... Anyhow, I told Singer I'd sent for you, and he wants to see you. Good. Now, well, wait a minute. Um, just what is the connection? Connection? Yeah, I mean, if it's all happened around here, why am I going to Grand Canyon tomorrow? I think you'd better get the story from Lieutenant Singer. <laughs> okay, Bill, whatever you say. And, uh, Johnny? Yeah? If you do find Christy Orloff... Yes. Just remember what I told you about him and his background. Sure. Item three, a buck for a taxi across town to the 18th Precinct and a very brief visit with Randy Singer. Oh, 
son of a gun. I might have known some darn fool would drag you and Johnny so you can get in our way and make a general nuisance all of right, yourself. All right, all right. Now face up to it, Randy. If it weren't for my unselfish, unstinting help over the years, you might be doing the job that you're really suited for. Yeah, and what might that be? Pounding a beat. What else? <laughs> my pal. <laughs> but you're not going to be underfoot this time. Oh, how do you know? Because thanks to our usual efficiency in this department, plus my inspired leadership... Here, here. We've already nabbed the two guys who actually made the heist. Oh? Is he Frambler Soapy Norton? Well, um, then where does Christy Orloff come in? Both Soapy and Izzy separately, and each without the other knowing it, sang like canaries, hoping we'd go easy on them. That's typical. And each of them told us the rocks had been handed over to Christy Orloff. I see. But could we find any sign of them around him or on him? Nope. No. We held him on suspicion as long as we could. Meantime, went over his apartment like Sherlock Holmes. Nothing. Mm-hmm. And yet it makes sense for him to have it. Because Orloff is one of the greatest passes ever lived. Yes. Yeah, mostly dope over the years, but also important jewelry, artwork. Only small stuff that he could actually carry on his person. Also, Johnny, Orloff has all the right contacts for disposing of such stuff, especially on the West Coast. Well, then it seems to me, Randy... I'm way ahead of you. The L.A. San Francisco cops are with us all the way. They know those contacts will keep an eye on them. And if Olaf meets one of them out there, he... But I I, I don't think he will. Got too much sense. Can smell a bull a mile away. And that's why you head for Grand Canyon. Why? Because that's where Christy Olaf is headed. To recover from the shock of this unwarranted incarceration by the muddled, misled minions of the law, as he put it. <laughs> Look, Randy. Yeah, now shut up and listen to me. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I sure. told you I was way ahead of you. Well? One of my boys, Rafe Kelly, sort of unofficially is on Christie's train, keeping tabs on him as far as Chicago. Keeping tabs on anybody he meets, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. But once he leaves Chicago, and the next stop will be Grand Canyon, <laughs> well... Randy, all on the word of two heisters trying to pass the buck. Yeah. And the fact that Orloff said he's heading that way. Yeah, because he's smart enough to do exactly what he said. Oh, look, Johnny, I know him. I know him inside and out. Oh, you do? Oh, huh? yes, sir. Uh, why you haven't been able to nail him down after all these years? Uh, <laughs> touche. <laughs> But, Johnny, I'm betting my bottom dollar the Grand Canyon's where he'll try to make his pass. But, Randy, if you didn't find the stones on him or at his place... Yeah, I know. Somehow, knowing the way I do, I'm sure he'll somehow have them on him when the time comes to make the contact. Mm. What about his luggage on the train? Oh, uh, yeah. Kelly telephoned me from Chicago only a couple hours ago. He went through it twice. Nothing. Well, Randy, it seems to that me... It seems to me, Johnny, you need a vacation. Grand Canyon. Oh, talk about a shot in the dark, though. Well, will you do it? Just for me? Just for old time's sake? No. Oh, now, listen, But Johnny. I will for one other reason. Yeah? It'll give me a free gander at the place. Which reminds of me... Of what? Have you a description of Orloff that I can look at? Oh, yeah. Right here. Complete, including the picture. Good, because if I... Hey, a minute. You mean to tell me this sweet, harmless-looking little old man, this is Christy Orloff? Don't let it fool you, Johnny. If he catches on to who you are and why you're there... Oh, believe me, Johnny, look out. All right, Randy. I'll take your word for it. Everybody, lend an ear. The Rexall One Cent Sale is here. I am the penny you see on TV. Save lots of money. Listen to me. Get twice as much for a penny more at the One Cent Sale at your Rexall store. There are hundreds of bargains. Everything from aspirin to vitamins, hairspray to shave cream. And all at two for the regular price of one plus a penny. Get twice as much for a penny more at the One Cent Sale at your Rexall store. It's on now. Expense account item four. Just before cocktails, dinner, and a show with Billy Walker, $184 at Willoughby's Camera Store to be sure I'd look like a genuine tourist when I got to Grand Canyon. Item five, the following morning, $176.22 for a jet to Phoenix, Arizona. Then after we sat down there, item six, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. The 
next 235 miles were mighty interesting driving through the colorful desert country around Wickenburg, Prescott, Ash Fork, and finally into the lower edge of the Kaibab National Forest. And then, Grand Canyon. You know, a lot of words have been written about the canyon, about its appalling size and rugged beauty, its fantastic colors, always changing, like a giant kaleidoscope that never stops moving and yet never repeats itself. The many huge spires and temples and buttes, whole ranges of mountains that jut up from this mild, deep chasm. The mighty Colorado sweeps along in its dash to the sea. Well, words simply can't begin to do it justice. And the tireless forces that have molded it. The river, the rain, the frost and snow and sun are still at work on this incredible sculpture. Amazing, beautiful, impressive, almost overpowering. As I finish signing my name on the register at the famous El Tovar Hotel, perched there above the canyon's rim, the clerk passed a telephone to me. Yes, sir, it's a call for you. Oh, thank you. Johnny Dollar. I told you I was right, sunshine. Uh, Randy. Now, listen. Go ahead. I got another call from Kelly. Yeah? Your little friend Olaf will arrive there by train sometime tomorrow morning. Good. Though I don't know whether I can stand your having been right for once. I'm always right. Oh, sure, sure. Go on. Now, listen. I'm listening. I also got a call from the cops out in L.A. about Ricky Fortino. Remember that hood? Narcotics, wasn't it? Uh Uh-huh. Narcotics, jewelry, artwork, the black market in Europe, gold smuggling in Hong Kong. Just about anything big time you can think of. I'll try to phone you an ID on him later. All right, but what about him, Randy? He's taking a train out of L.A. to guess where. Here? Uh Uh-huh. Now, why those guys travel by train when something's on the fly, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't attract as much attention as a plane flight. Anyhow, that means Fortino's going to be the receiver for that necklace. Certainly looks that way. And being here, he's clear of the L.A. police. Sure. Uh, when's he get here? I don't know. Probably not until after all Olaf does. But what's the difference? Those two will take their time about making the pass anyway. So until they're certain they're in the clear, no tails on them. Right. So, there it is, Johnny. Go to it. But be careful, boy. Be careful. And all for the sake of building up that half-baked reputation of yours. Sure. <laughs> Why not? You're a bum. Of course I am. All right, Randy. I'll be in touch. <laughs> Item 7, 580 for dinner. Then I noticed that a lot of the guests wandered outside. And no wonder. The moon, low in the sky, was bright and full. And the canyon took on a completely new and almost mysterious beauty. The myriad colors gone, of course, but in their place, the jagged spires and peaks stood out in bold relief, casting bleak black shadows in weird and exciting patterns onto the canyon floor. And from where I finally stood against the railing on the edge of a promontory, I could look back at the El Tobar and see it silhouetted starkly against a silvery, moonlit cloud. I brought along the camera purely as a prop. But here, if the lens and the film were fast enough, was a chance to shoot a masterpiece. To steady it for a time exposure, I set the camera on a post. Then, to get a better aim, and uh, hoping none of the park service men were looking my way, I carefully climbed over the railing holding on tightly with one hand, for it left me leaning slightly over the dark, seemingly bottomless chasm. And then, well, I guess I was too engrossed in setting the shutter and focus. For the next thing I remember is feeling a heavy boot smash under my fingers, losing my grip, and then a falling, falling... I came to my senses a little while later. I was tangled up in a bush beside a little trail not not 20 feet below the spot from which I'd fallen. Believe me, I muttered a prayer of thanks. As I lay there, I suddenly realized that Randy was all wrong. That Orloff's contact from the coast, Ricky Fortino, had already arrived. And somehow, 
that recognized me. So what if he didn't know my reason for being there? He might well suspect it. And it was obvious that he didn't like the idea of my being around. If only Randy had been able to give me a description of him. Anything, so I'd know who to look out for now. Wait a minute. If he thought I could recognize him, perhaps he'd stay out of my way. Until I could find out if Orloff was bringing the necklace. The next morning at breakfast, I carefully looked over the other guests in the hope of finding one of them surprised at seeing me still alive, but it was only a waste of time. All right, then. There was only one thing I could do. Stay as close to Christy Orloff when he got there as I possibly could. So from the time his train pulled in until dinner that evening, I was either watching the door of his room for a possible caller or within 50 feet of the gentle-looking little old man. On a guided bus tour run by the park service, I even sat right next to him. As a matter of fact, as the two busiest shutterbugs of the lot, we now, were quite friendly. there you can see the 70-foot-high Indian watchtower, a faithful reproduction of the strange buildings put up here many centuries ago. Oh, boy, oh. Fascinating, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. Yes. Boys there on the brink of the canyon, it is built entirely of native stones. At the base there is a kiva. That is to say, a reproduction of an ancient ceremonial chamber once used by the Pueblo Indian. Ah, how about that? Beautiful, beautiful. On the walls of both the kiva and the tower you'll find numerous actual specimens of Indian pictographs, drawings and carvings well, of century. I see that you're as busy with your camera as I am with my young man. <laughs> yeah, I've used up about two rolls of film on this bus trip alone, Mr. Uh, uh, Orloff, did you say it was? Yes, 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 quite right. And your name is... Well, what you don't. Know. I'm afraid you forgive me, old man, but I've forgotten your name already. I'm sorry, it's Burns, Jerry Burns. Oh, of course, of course. Ah, Jerry, I just love to take pictures. I'm never without my camera. Ah, look, look at that Indian boy walking by. Fine, fine, got it. Good. Uh, Kenley, are you taking a mule trip down to the Bright Angel Trail in the morning? Well, um, I'm certain that I shall. Oh, well, good, then I will too. Excellent. Oh, and Jerry, why, why don't you share my table at dinner this evening? I don't know why not. Ah, excellent. Excellent. And then ah, but look there. The there is a wonderful picture. See? Right there. And then it hit me. His hiding place for the necklace. If that is Randy had been right, that he actually had it. Yes, the corniest, most obvious, and because it was so obvious, the best hiding place of all. In the one thing that he kept with him every minute. Except when he went to meals. No wonder Randy and his boys had missed it. And the tip-off? It was the fact that he must have snapped 70 or 80 pictures with that little camera, but without once changing the film. But I had to make sure. Item 8, back at the hotel. 380 for a call to Randy Singer. And you're sure that'll be the right time, Johnny? I'll make it the right time, Randy. Just be sure you keep him on the phone long enough to give me plenty of time. Okay, Johnny, okay. Now, don't let him out of your sight or Ricky Fortino will get to him as sure as guns. Don't you worry. Again, the vigil. Until at dinner time, I knocked on the door of his first floor room, then together we went to the dining room, sat down, and ordered the meal. An appetizer, then the soup course, the entree. Then finally, the maitre d' came over and told Orloff there was a New York call for him at the desk. He looked puzzled for a moment, then politely excused himself. As soon as he was gone, I ducked down the corridor to his room, slipped the lock, closed the door behind me, and frantically looked around through his things for the camera. I found it at the bottom of a suitcase, opened the back, and there, sure enough, was the necklace. I stuffed it into my pocket, closed the camera, and put it back. But there was another matter to take care of. Or rather, another man, the one who tried to push me into the canyon. So when I heard steps, two pairs of them, coming down the hallway, I made a quiet but hasty exit through an open window. 
I stood there behind a bush and watched as Orloff and a short, dark, wiry-looking man walked in and headed for the suitcase. I tell you, Orloff, I don't hang around here any longer than I got to. Della finds out that I'm around. If he knows that I'm the one who gave him that push last night, I... All right, all right, all right. All right, so produce the loot. Let me scram out of here. Come on, come on, will you? Well, just be patient. It's right here in the back of my camera. Here. Here you are. You see, it's... What? Yes, huh? Ricky, look. Look, it's gone. Somebody got to it. Okay, Orloff. So that's why you tried to stall, huh? No, 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 Ricky. Put that gun down. Big Hugo thought that necklace might be too pretty for you to part with. What? Yeah. He thought you might try some phony dodge like this. Dodge? Make out like it got snatched from you? No. No, listen, Ricky. You know what he told me I should do if you did? Ricky! Yeah. This. No, no! One quick movement. From somewhere under his coat, Orloff pulled a gun and got off a shot. And then... By the time it was over, the two of them lay on the floor. Both very dead. Come to think of it, there's an extra dividend on this case. Fortino's mention of Big Hugo, whoever he is. So now the police know of another big shot to gun for. Expense account total, including a couple of extra days there at Grand Canyon. Oh, call it five and a half bills. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, I'll be back with another exciting adventure. Be sure to join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone. Produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Sound patterns by Joseph Cabibbo. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Eugene Francis as Lieutenant Randy Singer, Casey Allen as Bill Walker, Arthur Cole as Christy Orloff, Ralph Bell as Ricky Fortino, Guy Rep as the Park Service Guide, and Sam Ruskin as the hotel clerk. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hanna speaking. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.